Welcome to Ecosystem Basics. Today I'm going to be diagramming a prairie ecosystem. You can make your own ecosystems diagram just like mine. Set up your paper like mine and here we go. The first thing we need to know is what is an ecosystem? Well the prefix eco comes from the Latin word meaning home and therefore refers to the components of a place where living things exist. An ecosystem is a place where living things affect each other's existence and are also affected by the surrounding non-living elements. The definition I recorded is from the book and it says, all the organisms living in a place together with their environment. That's an ecosystem. We have many different types of ecosystems that you have seen in your neighborhoods, parks, school grounds, during trips and vacations. We're going to be looking at one particular ecosystem today and that's a prairie ecosystem. If you would like to do your own ecosystem example, please feel free to. Let's check out our prairie example. Here is the prairie ecosystem. Today we are going to diagram this ecosystem. Obviously you wouldn't see all of these creatures out all at once, but that's the beauty of this illustration. In the column on the left side, we are going to make a list of everything we would find in that prairie ecosystem. This list needs to have everything. All right, let's check out that image and see what we can find. If you need more time to view the image, just push pause. What did you find? Let's check out what I found on my list and see if you found anything different. I have on my list fox, bird, hawk, grasshopper, trees, flowers, grass, rocks, soil, sun, air, temperature, fire, butterfly, squirrel, and mouse. Did you spot something that I didn't see? Looks like we're ready to start diagramming our ecosystem. Now, what non-living thing provides the energy to start the food web? So I said it was non-living and it provides energy. Do you know what it is? It's the sun, yes, the sun. So I'm gonna draw a picture of the sun in the top left quadrant of the paper. Um, the sun is making it hard for you to see my sun. It's there though. All right, let's move on. What things in our list take energy from the sun and make their own food? Well, that would be green plants. Since they make or produce their own food, we're gonna call green plants producers. And I'm going to write the word producers in the upper right corner quadrant of the page. Let's look back at our list and identify what organisms belong in the producer section. We're going to find them and then we're gonna write them down in that box. The producers that I see are trees, flowers, and grasses. I'm gonna go ahead and record that in that upper right quadrant. We will be studying how producers make their own food through a chemical process called photosynthesis later in this unit. Now, after we have our quadrant done here for producers, we're gonna see that the energy flow from the sun goes to the plants. And I forgot to draw my arrow there, but it will be there at the end of this video. But energy from the sun helps the plants make food. So can everything in our ecosystem live on direct energy from the sun? No. 
How do organisms that cannot make their own energy from the sun get the energy they need to survive? Well, they eat. Animals must eat to survive, and since they have to consume food to survive, we're gonna call them consumers. I'm gonna write the word consumers in the lower right quadrant of my page. I want you to identify the organisms from our list that belong in the consumer section. Take a moment to review the list and I'll show you the image again. We're looking for our consumers. One way to identify consumers is they have mouths. They eat to live. People are actually consumers too. What consumers do you see? On my list, I came up with fox, bird, hawk, grasshopper, butterfly, squirrel, and mouse. All right, I'm going to represent the energy flow in our ecosystems from producers to the consumers with an arrow. So the direction of this energy flow arrow from the producers to the consumer section shows that consumers get their energy from producers. But do all consumers eat plants? No. So we're going to categorize our consumers into groups. If our consumers eat the plant's energy directly, we're gonna call them a primary consumer. If our consumers eat other consumers that eat plants, then they are secondary consumers. Let's first identify our primary consumers. Grasshopper, butterfly, squirrel, and mouse are all primary consumers because they get their energy directly from plants. Birds sometimes get them from plants too. They'll eat seeds, which gives them that energy, but they also eat worms, so I counted them as a secondary consumer. Hawks eat animals, foxes eat animals, they are secondary consumers. Can we classify consumers by what they eat? Yes. Some organisms are herbivores. That means they only eat plants. Other organisms are carnivores that only eat meats. Our final group are omnivores and they eat plants and animals. So looking back at our list, we would say our primary consumers or our plant eaters are the herbivores because they only eat plants. That would be our grasshopper, our butterfly, our squirrel, and our mouse. They're all herbivores. Let's identify the carnivores on our list. And we know carnivores only eat meat. Well, on our list, the hawk is really the only one that only eats meat. The fox will eat berries and animals. And birds eat berries and seeds and worms. So they eat plants and animals. So the hawk is our only carnivore. That leaves us with our omnivores. And omnivores eat plants and animals. So we would say our bird and our fox are both omnivores. When you look at all of your consumers, do you notice something? Well, they're all animals that have a mouth. So when we think about consumers, we're gonna remember they all have mouths. There is another group of consumers that do not have a mouth. This group of consumers are not animals and they absorb their energy instead of eating. They actually have a special role in the ecosystem. They break down dead matter and recycle it to a usable form. We call this specialized group of consumers decomposers. What happens when producers and consumers die? They rot, decay, or decompose, and living organisms are responsible for this. We call them decomposers. If we did not have decomposers, dead things would remain on the ground and never go away. So we are going to go ahead and put decomposers on in this box here. And I'm gonna ask you some questions to see if you can identify some decomposers. So what grows on bread if you leave it in a moist, dark place? What grows on bread? Well, that would be fungus or mold. Uh, what grows on your shower curtains? That would be a fungus, it's mildew. What does Lysol kill? germs, their common name for bacteria. What has a stem and a cap and grows in damp places in the forest and tastes good on pizza? Well, that would be the fungus mushroom. 
And so those are some decomposers. And the reason they're not on our list is because we can't generally see them except for some of them and we can see mushrooms, but we can't always see some of those. So um, I know that was probably not on your list either. Now we're going to take our arrows and we're going to draw them because when consumers die, decomposers break them down. And also when producers die, decomposers break them down. So energy goes to decomposers from dead producers and dead consumers. Our last quadrant already has the sun in it. We discussed that the sun was non-living and supplied the energy to the plants. We're gonna put the remaining items on our prairie ecosystem list in that box. We're gonna write rocks, sun, soil, air, fire, and temperature. These are all abiotic. Abiotic are parts of the ecosystem that are non-living and have never lived. We're gonna write the word abiotic in the section with the sun. Producers, consumers, and decomposers are all living things. So we're gonna label all of those boxes biotic because they are living. I'm gonna draw an arrow from decomposers to the abiotic box because energy flows from decomposers. When they've broken down those biotic factors, it adds nutrients to the soil. And then that abiotic factor with the soil, which producers grow and those plants grow in it, and then that sunlight helps start everything again. And I'm also gonna add that arrow that I forgot earlier from the abiotic to the producers because the energy from the sun is traveling to those plants to help them grow. That is our Ecosystems Basics diagram so we can see how energy flows within an ecosystem. We're going to learn more about these concepts and more in our Ecosystems unit. Take care. Peace.